What's up, bro? Good. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start with some some brain teasers to okay. get us going and sure. to get the viewers and listeners uh, get to know you better. Um, yeah, let's start off. Um, if you can choose one skill, would you rather be able to talk to animals, or would you prefer to be able to speak all human languages? Good question, dude. And the thing is, like, I'm super bad at languages. People, people. The people languages. I think. Yeah. And there's so many weird languages out, languages out there, yeah, right? Yeah. I think, practically speaking, like, I'd love to be able to communicate with other people. Yeah, yeah. yeah that'd be awesome. Kalau binatang, kayaknya. Oh, it's podcast f- uh, full English. Full, no, oh, in, in English only. Okay, English. Uh-huh. full English. Yeah. Uh-huh. No tips. Mm. All right. What's a funny thing that you did as a kid that your mom or your family keeps on bringing until this day, like joke around? The. It's not one thing. It's just the amount of things that I forget. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that's it. <laughs> The amount of things that you forget. Yeah, I'm super, forget. I'm super forgetful. <sighs> <laughs> Alright. Would you rather work more hours per day but have fewer days to work or work fewer hours per day but work fewer days? Sorry, but work more days. Uh, good question. Ambivalent. I'm ambivalent on that question. Okay. Just get the task then. <laughs> Just get the task. I like that. Mm-hmm. Right. If you can have, if you can wear one shirt with one word, and you gotta wear the whole, throughout the whole year, what word would it be? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. <laughs> No idea. <laughs> I've never thought about that question before. <laughs> Nike. Yeah. Nike. Nike. <laughs> Just do it. I guess. <laughs> the one word is Nike. Yeah. <laughs> well, Nike was god of something, right? Nike yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, last one. If you can get rid of one thing in the world, what would it be? Hmm. Tough questions early on. If I could get rid of one thing in the world. Cancer. Nice question. And nice answer. Love it. Hmm. All right, bro. You are a doer of keto diet. The ketogenic diet. Right. Um, yes. can you describe what, what a keto diet is? And because there's a lot of people are saying about it, talking about it, the keto diet, what is it? Okay. So the, the big problem is that I am no longer a doer of the keto diet, <laughs> but, uh, what it is, is it's an attempt to, uh, rearrange the ratio of, uh, nutrition. Uh, that you get into one that is uh, supposed to help you draw energy from uh, the biggest uh, reserve of energy, which is fat, versus taking it from other sources mm. uh, that you have in your body. Mm. And if we can re- rewind back, you you were uh, you fell ill a few weeks ago, um, yes. right? Um, but before that, you were doing this keto keto diet, and 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 you did reach that ketosis state, right? Right, and which is awesome because it's really difficult to to reach that keto keto state. You, you gotta what, what you gotta eat a certain amount of food, and you you have to avoid a certain food. What are those food that you had to avoid, and what are the certain food that you had to do to reach that state? Well, again, it's actually a matter of ratios. 
um, what you're trying to get is basically less than 20 grams of uh, carbs every day. So your primary source of uh, energy again is from healthy fats, um, moderate intake of protein. And so it's not really a matter of what you can or cannot eat per se, but it's a matter of how to keep that ratio. And what is a normal intake? How many grams of uh, carbs do people usually usually eat in a day? <sighs> Anything from 150 to 300. Wow. So, so, so you have to bring it down to 20 grams 20 per day. Grams. That's right. Wow. So that's almost what um ten percent to twenty percent of the S- carbs that like we that. eat. Something like that. So you sort of need to engineer it. Wow. In such a way as to be able to. And those. Get there. And that engineering is that difficult to do it to to do here? Um, cause So f- for me, what was helpful is to get on different caterings. So you'd have someone to already think about all the uh, macro nutri- nutrients that you sort of need to uh, take in um, and that sort of makes it very easy mm. are there uh, any supplements that one should take if they're if they're considering keto first of all like if you want to do keto like uh, you should really think about the, the food that you take and ideally the vitamins that you're looking for can be found in those places already but um it's good to take a it's good to really look at the nutrition you're taking and mm. and, and think about adding multivitamin or or things of that nature mm. if necessary mm. Mm. and people say that once they reach that ketogenesis ketogenesis I don't know if I'm saying it right if they if you reach that state you get a certain uh, feeling of like energy that's true can it's you describe what's it like like what, what it feels very constant it, it feels very constant Huh. It feels as if, as if there's no crash in the middle of the day, that you normally would if you were uh, on different kinds of uh, diets. Like, and partly I think that's caused by the fact that the sugar levels are very low. Mm. Mm. So it's more constant s- level of energy, and and what does sugar have uh, to do with it? So you cannot eat sugar at at all for sugar and carbohydrates like they're they go hand in hand mm. so you have to reduce the sugar component mm. almost out of your diet too mm. um, but yeah mm. it's, it's because of uh, sugars and the way that it interacts with your insulin levels in your blood if I'm not mistaken mm. Mm. do you know anyone else doing it are you, are you yeah not too many not the way that I am actually in fact, maybe I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the only one that I know who 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 are doing it constantly. Or, yeah, you know, and so did right some, on. <laughs> I did some research on it, and it just worked out for me. Yeah, yeah. Well. I felt like um, you're very energetic, very focused. I'm like, wow, it's keto works. You know what I mean? Because right. keto, all, all I hear is from UFC, <laughs> from right. from MMA for people yeah, yeah, yeah. you know in the West, you know, like, talking, preaching about it, but like. Damn, see it. That's what it yeah. works. Yeah. And a lot of people have like the wrong conception about it and 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 try to do it incompletely. And if you do it incompletely and don't go all out, then what you're adding is fat on fat and and a lot of other junk. And if you add carbs to it, then you're essentially adding so many different types of calories in your in your diet and and people become confused that they don't achieve their results because it's an all or nothing proposition I see. with this particular one you're either in ketosis or you're not uh-huh. and if you're not and you're and you're st- and you're already adding all of these things in it means that you're you're not cutting the other components of uh, the ratio out and yeah not good for you how long does one take um, to get into ketosis if they're doing it right? As fast as two days. Hmm? As fast as two days. 
But if they don't, they will never get it right. Or they will never get into ketosis, right? And do you measure ketosis in some way? Is there how do you measure it? There are a couple ways to do it. One is like uh, the most hardcore way, is like there's a sampler, takes your blood from your finger. Takes your blood from takes blood from your finger. Okay. To see whether you are in or not. So that's the most extreme version. Um, the less extreme version is to take a urine sample. Urine sample. Yeah. Okay. There's a sampler for that. And a sampler for that. Is it convenient to check every day to to do it? It's yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's cool. Okay. It's okay. cool. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Well, this keto diet supposedly like enhances your focus, makes you become more productive, and so forth. Mm-hmm. And um, you obviously have like a crazy work schedule with with the work that you do. Tell us a bit about what you do on a daily basis. What is the macro? What what do you what what is June busy with? Um, what is June busy with? June is busy with uh, running this uh, thing called Rove Projects. And our projects is a gallery that represents Indonesian artists. And what it attempts to do is to try to provide a sustainable platform for them to build careers um, out of their art making practice. And it's and it's something that now is uh, going beyond a uh, local sphere and now into uh, more of an international dialogue and context as well. So. Uh, Initially, we were working with Indonesian artists, but we also felt that it's important to to build conversations between our artists with uh, those abroad as well. Let's speak about the etymology side of things. How did you come up with the name Raw Project? What does it mean? It just means spirit. Um, I think it's an essential component of of what art is, um, especially with regards to contemporary art. Um, people can come up with all these theories about the fact that it's an intellectual device only, that it's a conceptual thing only of the mind. But I think that um, it would be very incomplete to look at art um, without looking at the other dimensions to it. And I think the spirit is really important. Wow. Wow. And how did you get into art? That's a very good question. I don't know. Um, I want to say that it comes um, just more organically or naturally, but um, in hindsight, I think that my mother played a big role in always sort of um, exposing me, I suppose, to things that are more aesthetic and things that are more cultural in nature. And it's those kinds of early seeds that have sort of led me here, I think. Yeah. Yeah, your families are big collectors of art and you were exposed to high art when you were a kid, since you were a kid, and you know you majored in philosophy. Did you always want to do art? Did you, did you know from an early beginning that no. you wanted to do this? Definitely not. Um, it was like finishing up my education I think somewhere along those lines that um, this sort of just came on my lap and um, again it feels very organic um, and so just decided to continue doing Yeah. what do you like about the abstractness of, of art of philosophy of art what, 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 attract, what attracts you to it um, I think it's it's just a really uh, interesting tool and device that, or medium that helps people to expand uh, their mind, expand the way they th- they th- they think, uh, be able to empathize more for other people's perspectives in a way that's not direct, but in a way that slowly um, helps them. Yeah, and. In the art that you represent, and you work with, obviously artists who are, who are, amazing at what they do. Can you tell us a bit more about about them? About 
what they do what yeah what they do so so all the artists are, and they're very uh, different in terms of the way that they think um, we represent an artist for instance who uh, works with nature as a source of inspiration and has taken this so far into developing his own language and sort of universe of of thinking um, another artist um, he develops like these installations that relate with sound and light and um, sort of like analog machine processes which are uh, super cool too who are these artists that you mentioned the one in one who made his own language and one in the machine process also. So the first of which is Shaif, this artist called Shaifu Garibaldi. Mm. And the second, his name is Bagus Pandega. Mm. Where are they, where are they from? Are they, are they Indonesian? Where, where, they're where? Indonesian. Mm? They're Indonesian and they're based in Bandung now. Mm. Mm. Um, we find that a lot of uh, great artists who have a lot of potential uh, in Indonesia, um, they were educated in Bandung. At ITB mm. or the Bandung Institute of Technology. Mm. In one of your interviews, you said that collabor- collaboration is is very important, you know, among the artists and among the galleries, among everyone, the ecosystem. How has collaboration um, been for you in, in your experience? It's interesting you mentioned that because recently there was a gallerist that uh, brought up this topic that one of the core identities of our gallery and what we do is collaborate collaborating actually and it's so funny that uh, normally galleries have um, identities that are shaped for instance by a certain aesthetic that they're trying to push a certain a certain uh, conceptual vision for instance but that this person brought up the fact that one of our core things is collaboration which shouldn't be part of the identity, I suppose, of a gallery. But I sort of think of that um, as a compliment rather than a criticism because um, I do think that collaborating is so important, that it means so much uh, for us to think beyond ourselves and uh, to think about how we can reach r- across the aisle and, and, and to find similarities rather than differences to work together. Um, because I think that reflects um, the point of what we're trying to do in the first place with this, uh, which is um, to be inclusive, to look at things from other people's perspectives, and to create dialogue and conversation and share ideas. Um, I'm working, uh, we're working in an industry that is very closed up, actually, and um, contains elements of protectionism, um, but I I sincerely feel that for us to develop this thing called contemporary art further, we need to work together. Has the vibe been always collaborative, um, or has it been like a recent trend in in art in contemporary art? I think that it is becoming more of a trend. Um, however, um, we just f- flowed naturally and organically mm. and, and felt from the beginning that this would be an important mm. Mm. cornerstone of our mm. activities. Yeah. Um, in this, talking about collaboration, you worked with international galleries like Edward Maling, like in, in Hong Kong. Mm. How do you work across cultures? How do you? Are, are you able to work with people? That it's, it's, it's it starts first and foremost uh, through uh, our friendship. So it's super organic too. Like it's just we have a good chemistry between each other, and from that uh, chemistry, uh, we then uh, try to work together and find ways we can help each other. And how's the ecosystem in Asia doing? Um, Lately, you've been, well, not lately, you, you've always worked in and exhibited in, in biggest shows in, in Asia. How, how has the region been, been like for you? Well, it's slowly progressing. It's slowly progressing. 
um, what is super interesting is the fact that we still have such a long way to go, if anything. And because we have such a long way to go in terms of infrastructure, in terms of, in terms of, uh, in terms of many things. It's because of that that uh, there are so many exciting opportunities. Uh, because we get to, we get to, to be a part of building that. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the, the trading side of things, like the business side of things. Sure. Um, are you involved in that? Are you involved in 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 trading art? Uh, f- you know, like from that point of view. So, um, we are what what our projects is, is we're a primary market uh, gallery. What it means to be a primary market gallery is that our core activity is to work directly with artists to present uh, the sort of newest body of work that they're uh, currently developing. This is different to say a secondary market gallery that uh, what they do is to uh, look for great pieces that are already out there in in the market and then try to uh, buy and sell those works. So because we fall in the category of the primary market, um, we don't really uh, do trades of works uh, beyond um, those works that the artists make for the shows in our gallery. Oh, I see, I see. Mm. Thanks for mm. telling us about that. No. Um, the, you said about the artists, do the artists, when do they produce the art? Is it um, when there's a certain... Um, inspiration idea to do so or was or when there is a, a show going on how, how I think it's it's quite complex I think um, some artists produce works for shows other artists produce works for the sake of making works um, everyone has their own rhythm so um, it's cool to see that actually mm. good question um you're going to go to Shanghai, you know, with um, with an artist who is very well known, and yeah, Masriadi. We did that last year, actually. How about the, the one in November? Correct me if I'm wrong. Who are you going to go so, with? In December, actually. In December, we're bringing Masriadi again to uh, Miami. Um, in November, we're showing a few artists in Shanghai but it's sort of like a collection or, or a selection of of uh, many artists okay so let's speak about your next one the one in Shanghai with multiple artists um, sure. what can the crowd expect from, from, from that um, what is your thought process on that so show? Um, we wanted to just do some we wanted to do a presentation on on how contemporary artists um, from our perspective uh, look at this thing called landscape. It's something with so much embedded histories, and uh, especially in in China, with with uh, ink painting and and scroll painting and things of that nature. So we wanted to do a presentation, sort of, about how art how our artists look at landscape. Landscapes. Mm-hmm. Is that a theme um, coming from the exhibition or? Is it it's something that we sort of wanted to mm, okay. uh, showcase mm. in this particular landscape. The theme is going to be landscape. Precisely. And is the exhibition uh, open to anyone, or is it? Is it um, it's open for public. It's open for public. It is. Um, it's called Westbound Art Fair. Oh, well, that's sick. Mm-hmm. At the same time, we'll also be uh, participating in another fair in Shanghai at the same time called Art Zero Two One, and there we'll be collaborating with a gallery from Thailand to show a young Thai artist mm. as well. Are exhibitions around the world for free generally or is it um, ticketed? Um, speaking about the breadth and the scope of the accessibility of art. It really depends. There's so many different types of um, uh, places where you can access uh, shows. The cool thing is with galleries, they're for free. 
anybody can come in at any time to see the shows in art galleries such as our uh, projects um, but the nonprofits like museums and whatnot all around the world they require uh, certain fees to get in and those fees are normally because of the fact that the, ga the museums are non for profit and they need some source of revenue to cover their basic costs uh, speaking of galleries um, Rob, there's something exciting going hap going to happen with Rock Projects uh, gallery right um, what's 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 one can expect from Rock Projects in terms of um, Rock Projects actual gallery so um, we're in the process of uh, building our new space right now and we've been working on making this materialize for the past few years so um, perhaps that <laughs> we hope that um, we can share more information about that too that's awesome and um, since since a gallery is a physical presence of a of of the galleries and the and the owners and the artists and the people there um, how has like infrastructure and interior design played for you are you heavily involved in it do you um, I'm very lucky to get a chance to collaborate with an old friend of mine who is a brilliant architect and the extent to which I'm involved is we talk every day we talk every day <laughs> <laughs> so it's time to um, to do everything um, well you mean hopefully yeah hopefully we'll try our best to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, what other galleries um, do you work with in um, in the region in, that you think um, are like you've worked together or shared ideas of well really like the, the gallery that we really look up to in Southeast Asia is this gallery in the Philippines called Silverland huh. um, so they're actually the first gallery that we started working together with um and it's a really great relationship because I see them as mentor figures as well. Um, but uh, we plan to start working with galleries all around the region, um, in Hong Kong, in Japan. Um, we have and plan to. Uh, Thailand, Singapore, um, China as well, perhaps. So maybe that's sort of the general scope of who we work with. Can you describe the art market in, in Southeast Asia and what what they're like in terms of countries or in terms of artists, in terms of exper your experience? When we talk about the market, I guess it's important for us to have a conversation about collectors, I suppose. And what, we're, what we really have... Um, going for us is that they're very passionate and they're very supportive and big hearted so um, because of that I think that we have a lot going for us despite for instance a lack of infrastructure or things of that nature what we have going for us is um, is that we have very passionate collector so you also travel around, uh, travel around the region. You you. How do you meet them? Do you meet them through re referrals? Do you meet them exhibitions? How do you broaden your network? I'm just very lucky that I get um, a chance to to meet them one way or the other. It just feels very organic. That I don't really know exactly where it begins or ends. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think relationships are a big big part of. Um, of, of our of art, Indeed. of 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 business for, for for work, and indeed, it's it's uh, again as again you say collaboration is not just between uh, stakeholders, but also between customers as well, and and it's maintain it's important to maintain a a long term relationship to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have an exciting you have an exciting project mm. called Roth Projects Projects. Mm. Um, 
What is that? Can you, can you tell us about that? We just felt that from our inception, well, we always wanted to do things that are a little bit outside of the box and a bit risky in terms of the way we present artists, in terms of um, the artists we choose to work with and, and the types of projects that we do. That's why I thought that projects would be interesting even as a name. But as the gallery is growing uh, a little bit uh, more mature, I think the propensity for us to take as uh, wild of risks as uh, we could before is getting a little bit less because um, of many factors that we sort of need to consider. It's just like a part of growing up, I suppose. Um, because of that, we wanted to sort of like build this little sister to the gallery or like a, a little branch that focuses more on like this this heavier experimentation, I suppose. Why do you think this is uh, important to do? I don't know if it's important to do, but I think it's fun to do. So, <laughs> it's because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think fun. Fun's awesome. Uh, Fun's important. Yeah. <laughs> um, you work with other. Pro you work with artists that also creates. Partnerships, for example, with um, consumer brands, um, like uh, that's such an amazing collaboration because it's basically intertwines to two things into one. Um, mm. uh, can you tell us about uh, that? Like, for example, your yeah, collaborations like so with artists and other brands. We're working on that. I think it's important that that if if we can find ways uh, for our artists just to be presented in a wider scale uh, and different mediums that we're not necessarily accustomed to yet. And because of that, when those opportunities arise, we'd love to explore. Yeah, yeah, like the, the, the watch that, that, that um, who did? Who d yeah, so uh, we're in the process of producing a collaboration between one of our artists, Uji Handoko. Uh, his name is Ahan, or his nickname is Ahan, with uh, this watch brand that's more global called Timex. Mm. Yeah. Uh, can, can we expect any time soon to, for it to, to be in the market? To well, we'll let you know <laughs> as soon as we can. Awesome. <laughs> you practiced Qigong meditation. Yes. Yes. Um, what is Qigong meditation? What is Qigong meditation? Oh my goodness. Um, what Qigong meditation is, is um, a way for you to realize that uh, your body is not just your nervous system, your muscular system and skeletal system. It's not just that. That there's another sort of way that energy goes through your body and some people call this chi um how do how do one unlock their chi or be become more aware of it to certain doing certain things or saying certain things or going certain places or i'm not an expert at this but um i know who is an expert and his name is uh, Babu Diman. He teaches a class uh, that goes on, uh, I think, once a month. He teaches a, an English version of the class. And one week of the month, he teaches an Indonesian version of the class. And I would suggest that if anyone wanted to learn more about meditation, that they check out this guy called Budiman. Hmm. Uh, he's a... He's Indonesian. He's um. He's Indonesian. Mm -hmm. uh, he was trained as a doctor, actually. Um, but uh, he was on a long journey to looking for ways to learn about meditation in the East, in China. And he finally found a way to reach 
uh, sort of a higher uh, state through it. And after that, wanted to teach it to other people. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Shigong meditation. Yeah. In terms of um, Indonesia as, as, a, as a whole, we, um, do, will art play a, like a bigger role in, in the future um, in, in society in unlocking people's um, potential or, or, or asking certain questions? I would certainly hope so. I mean, uh, it's becoming more and more clear that um, it's entering uh, much deeper into the general social fabric. Um, but that it's entering the general social fabric in a way that it's still very much on the surface. Um, but I'm quite bullish. I mean, that this is just a start. That. Um, it's not just for the gram. It, these people initially maybe uh, look at art from a sort of outer surface um, through things like taking selfies with the works um, and, and, uh, and art, but eventually we'll sort of have an aesthetic relationship with the work that, with art that mm. goes deeper than that. Mm. <laughs> Do you see art as um, a medium for communication of one's critique of society um, in your experience? And can you tell us from who do we should like check out um, in terms of artists who are you know into this? I mean, it can be. Art can do so many different type, dif different types of things, and that's uh, one of them. Um, an interesting artist who works in this field is uh, this guy called Eko Nugroho, and he's an artist based in Yogyakarta. And his works um, deal a lot with those kinds of things. Mm. Mm. And how about um, um, taking a step further in the region, uh, China? Mm. Are there because it's a unique uh, country with a unique you know political system, it sometimes produces very interesting artworks that comments on on what's happening there. Uh, do you see any similarities here that because of the different social circles here and political systems here that people are are producing certain art? that are um, relevant or um, challenging? The interesting thing is that um, I wish artists, I wish artists um, everywhere, well, both in China, both in Indonesia, could respond to their surroundings more because that's what it really means to be contemporary art artists. It's, it's, to, it's to speak about um, our time and be sort of the mouthpiece for the for those ideas for those emotions for those feelings so if if that means that they should communicate about more social political issues then they should do that um but i don't know if there if we can say that there are similarities so much between china and indonesia in terms of the art pr art output and the works that they produce i think that everywhere it's different and it really depends on on the respective places that they come from and cultures that they represent, I think. Totally. totally. Um, I want to talk about nature. In mm. Indonesia is such a beautiful place mm, yeah. with all its mm, natural um, beauty in it. How does nature affect your artists and how you, your, your works? At the, what is the, the what's the role of nature in in the flow of ideas and philosophy and I don't know if what the direct uh, relationship is. I think it's so much more complex than can be like the uh, that can be sort of simplified into like one source. But I'm sure that it is a source of inspiration that informs all of their work in different ways. 
Sure. I get reminded of uh, Shaiful Garibaldi's work, right. which is um, exploring um, his own uh, views on, on, on nature and communication. And your other artist, which resembles nature but mm. has his own definition of it, mm. which is so interesting. And um, Thanks. What else do you do you hope to get out of of the remaining of this year and for for your work? We have a couple more international exhibitions coming up. Um, but yeah, it's really I think we're preparing uh, and trying to organize all the things necessary for when we move to our new space. Mm. First um, and foremost. Do we have any idea when? Do you, you have a, any scoop? Hopefully um, sometime next year. 2020? 2020, hopefully. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Good. It, for those who don't know, um, Indonesia or Jakarta, where is it going to gonna be? It's going to be in the Mentang area, which is the central part of the city. Right. Actually. Nice. It's going to be awesome. Thank you. Hey, where can people find your work? And... Um, where can people access them um, to get to know more about raw projects and and you? Where can people access? Where can people? We have a website. It's called okay. rawprojects.net. Okay. Uh, for you to check it out. All right. How about um, social media? Social 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 media. Yeah, we have an Instagram. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Raw yeah. projects. Raw projects. All right. All right. Well, want to give a shout out to your team, who's um, who's been awesome. Um, yeah, uh, that's great. Yeah, great. Our um, team is great. Yeah, yeah. I'm very lucky. All right, bro. Um, it's been an awesome podcast. Thank you. Um, I think um you touched upon many things that I didn't know about art, and I hope um it sheds uh, some light into it, and um. Yeah, um, art's an amazing thing. It's it's an unknown thing. Sometimes it's a known thing. It's a mystery. It's it's an enigma. It's it's beautiful. Thank you. I think so too. Thanks for sharing. Um, thanks for sharing, and it's been it's been awesome. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Thank you, bro.